Today we're going to get a little bit of practice using a drop spindle. Here's a little bit closer look at it. This one in particular is called a top whirl drop spindle because we are going to be spinning off of the top of it. Um, I'm not quite sure how the drop spindle got its name, but your guess is as good as mine. In order to do this activity, the two things you're going to need will be your drop spindle, which has been provided in our Texas History Trunk supplies for you, and some roving. Um, very basically, this is just sheep's wool, but roving is the fancy name for it. Uh, you can also find this supplied in the Texas History Trunk. The first thing we'll do is we'll take our roving and we'll kind of separate it like so. It's not too hard. It just takes a few moments until you have some thinner strips. When you're done with that, you'll want a strip that looks roughly about the size of this one just to start with. The next thing we're gonna do is something called drafting. And very simply, drafting is just pulling your wool. So we're taking the wool and we're stretching it out until it's a lot more thin. Sometimes while you're doing this, especially if you're a beginner like myself, you might pull it a little bit too far um, and it might separate from the rest of the wool like so. Um, but one of the things we're going to be learning to do today is uh, spin this wool. So one of the properties of wool is that it likes to attach back to itself. So if you accidentally um, pull it a little bit too hard, just stick it back on there and kind of squeeze it together a little bit and you should still be good to go. We're gonna do a little bit of a tricky part next and we're going to get the wool started on our hook. And so you will take that section of wool that you've already drafted and we're going to hook it on. And to do this, it helps if you twist it a little bit with your fingers to make it a little stronger. And you're gonna put it on that hook. And then once you have it on the hook, we'll give it some twists. You can see I already have a nice piece of yarn coming up from that hook. I'm gonna twist it pretty strongly. And this is pretty much the concept of spinning wool is that you're twisting it the whole time. So at this point we've been twisting for a few minutes and my yarn is starting to get a lot longer um, and I need to draft a little bit more, so I'm going to do a trick called parking the spindle. I'm going to put the end of the spindle between my knees. That will free up my other hand to draft the wool a little bit more. Then I can remove. Spin my next length. Park it. Draft a little bit more. Spin. And I'm already getting to the point where I'm kind of running out of room here. And so I'm going to use the next tool on my spindle, which is a little slit in the side. Everybody's spindle should have that. Um, I'll pull my yarn down through that spindle and I will twist it around the spindle. And I'm going to keep doing that until a lot of my excess length is on my spindle. Then I'm gonna bring my yarn back up through that same slit and twist it around my hook a few times. Okay. 
and I'm ready to spin again. At this point, of course, I need to draft a little bit more, so I'm gonna park it. Draft some more. And spin. Park, draft, spin. And I'll keep doing this, working my way up the length of my wool. And then when I'm ready to wrap some more around my spindle, I'll untwist it from the loop and I'll put it right back around my spindle. Go back up through the slit and around my hook and I'm ready to go up even higher. And this is basically the process for doing this. Um, I haven't had that much practice, so there are quite a few people that make this whole thing look a lot easier than I just have. But with more and more practice with this whole process, you get better and better. After you've been spinning for a while, you're going to build up quite a bit of yarn on your spindle. Um, when you've got all that you need, you're going to grab it and slide it off. And then you'll have all the yarn that you just spun. This one's still um, kind of messy looking because I haven't had a chance to take it and rewind it into that nice little ball shape that we all like so much. So it would look more like this one. And if you want to make your wool into that shape, you'll just take it start your ball, do some wraps around the middle, hold it, and then go the opposite direction, and then keep twisting it until you have a nice ball shape to your yarn. That's probably not the important part. The important part is that you now have yarn and you're ready to do some other fun stuff with it. Today I have two different colors of wool. I have an undyed white merino wool and I have an undyed brown wool. Both of these are natural wool. Um, they were taken right off the sheep and that's just the color they are. Of course they have all different colors of sheep. They have black, brown, white. Um, but if you want to get more fancy, you can actually dye your wool um, just about any color that you want. If you were early Texas frontier settler, you didn't have access to a store of any kind, most likely. And if you wanted a dye, you had to make it yourself. So in our next Texas history trunk lesson, we're gonna be talking about making dyes and we're gonna actually get to make some dye ourselves. I hope you had fun learning to spin wool and please join us for our next Texas history trunk lesson where we're gonna learn more about natural dyes. See you guys next time.